Hello, good afternoon. Um, thank you for joining me here on a Saturday afternoon. I'm really excited to be here today um, to be able to talk to you and share some of my experiences um, and practical ideas to engage our youngest learners in the virtual classroom. Um, so I'm just going to go through to the overview for you now. Um, I'm going to start off by introducing myself. Um, my name's Hazel, Hazel Bowen. Um, I am um, an early years teacher and middle leader at the uh, British Council School of Madrid. I've been teaching for some 16 years now, um, always in the early years from um, pre-nursery right up into year one. Um, and 11 of those years I've been here in Madrid. Um, so that's a little bit about me um, and then really the, the idea for this um, this workshop came from all of a sudden in March going from being an early years classroom practitioner to um, a, a virtual teacher overnight and just um, how we had to adapt um, as, a, as a teaching unit from a being um, practitioners who thought about carefully planned open-ended activities and um, learning environments and, and very much letting children lead their own play and learning to how we could translate that through a screen so I just wanted to uh, uh, let you know that that's going to be a little bit of what I'm sharing with you today um, there were lots of surprises and challenges um, that we faced in those in those three months um, during the, the virtual teaching period. I uh, really wanted to share mostly the successes that we had, the things that we felt uh, worked really well that engaged our learners. I'm hoping to give you some concrete examples and practical tips and ideas. And then at the end, I'm going to um, leave some time for questions and reflections. So you'll see the, there's a Q&A that you can type your questions into. Um, I'm not here alone. <laughs> I, you, you, I'm the face you're seeing, but there, Gemma and Ali are also here moderating. So they're going to be uh, um, looking at your questions. Um, so and also making sure that everything is going well. So if you hear a different voice shouting through the presentation it might be just to tell me oh Hazel we can't see that or we can't hear you so just to know that um, Ali and Gemma are, are there in the background as well um, to help with the, the presentation so let's get started um, so firstly um, sharing um, with you really the surprises and, and challenges um, one of the biggest surprises actually um, at the time of, of um, the lockdown I was teaching in a nursery class so three and four year olds and they're always um, children especially working in a second language environment who are more reluctant to speak they, they might not be as verbal their language might not be as well developed or they might just be uh, pupils that are, are more reluctant to participate and actually <laughs> them being at home in their secure home environment with their their parents or a carer um, with them actually um, they gained confidence and and um, were really really participative in the online sessions whereas in the class room we, we maybe barely heard them speak um, so that was one of the real um, positive surprises that that we had um, in that period and also just to say that then obviously with such young learners and um, of course we, we had pre-nursery as well so we're talking about um, two and three year olds too some pupils difficult to engage through the screen um, they'd gone from being in a classroom with these adults and and, and other children to suddenly being at home in isolation and and looking at their their teachers and activities through a screen and we were really fortunate that we were able to meet with parents through video conferencing and to talk to them about the the, the difficulties they were having and the advice that we had um and i think worked really well was to say with very young children when you are delivering something live is to say to the parents it's okay if they don't want to engage but have the have the screen on have the volume on turn off your microphone and camera let them play with the, the lego at the side or um, you know if they're doing some drawing and um, let them carry on what they're doing because actually they will be listening um, they will be hearing the English if, if that's the language that you're teaching in they'll be hearing the familiar songs and stories and actually something may grab their attention and then they might want to come and join in on their own terms so um, it's about making it as positive as an experience as possible um, and not turning it into a battle or, or a negative experience at all. 
And then from a teaching point of view um, and an educator point of view, one of the, the, the biggest challenges was suddenly going into lockdown almost overnight and being at home with very little resources um, goes from maybe having a classroom that's well stocked with a printer and, and toys you could just go and grab and use to, to engage learners to being only at home with your own resources. We were lucky to be a large teaching team and able to share lots of ideas. We got creative with recycled materials and I'm hoping to show you and share some of that with you as we go through the presentation. And then one of the, the biggest surprises, I suppose, is um, the using of books and stories. We had to really rethink and modify that because whereas I'm accustomed to sitting on a carpet session with a book, um, sitting down and, and, and turning through pages um, like this and, and reading, what we found was children actually found that difficult to engage with. I'm, I'm sure you can see, actually, it's quite difficult to, to see the pictures um, and, and what's happening. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit next, just, just briefly about how we adapted some of our storytelling and use of books to, to, um, to the virtual um, context. So first thing first was to, to develop an awareness of how you appear on the screen. So we, we, we managed to do that by rehearsing um, conference uh, video conferences with, with a colleague, you know, and say, well, how does that look? And should I hold it a bit closer? Should I sit back a bit? Um, how's the light in the room? What we also did was record ourselves um, reading stories. Of course, if you record yourself reading a story or telling a story, you can watch that back and you can edit it. Um, or maybe I, I, I said that word, I mispronounced that word or that wasn't very clear. So I'm going to go back and do that. Excuse me, do that again. Um, and then we also used um, PowerPoint presentations, um, video movie movie makers and screen sharing. And I'm um, just going to, in a moment, share a little brief video clip. But one of the things I'm um, discussing with a colleague yesterday about using books props um, through the screen was actually in this context, that the smaller objects are, are much better. Whereas when you're teaching face to face, if you've got a teeny weeny pig and you're trying to tell a story, it isn't very engaging. But the benefit of having the screen is, so this is a very small board book, as you can see, is I can hold it right up while I'm talking to you and allow for you to see and engage with the, the illustrations. Whereas perhaps if I'm sitting in front of a group of 20 students, a small book, um, face to face, a small book wouldn't wouldn't have the same impact. And I'm just going to share with you now a small video. This is um, my colleague Noria. Um, so she photographed pages of a book. She's put them into um, into a presentation and recorded her voice over the top so she could share this with families. So I'm just going to play that for you now. Families, families, families. Some children have lots of siblings. Some children have none. Some children have two dads. Some have one mom. Some children live with their grandparents and some live with an aunt. Some children have many pets. Some children just have a plant. So there you go. Uh, you can see that it, using PowerPoint and recording your screen and recording your voice is it's quite simple. Once you once you start having a go and investigating, um, it's quite easy to do. One of the other things I found um, helped me was actually using YouTube. Um, a live story and perhaps I didn't like the voiceover that was with it or maybe there wasn't a voiceover and so I'm going to show it with you now I'm going to stop sharing the presentation and I'm going to share my desktop with you now in one moment <laughs> Okay, I'm going to show you now here. I hope that you can see this well. So this is just a story of the three Billy Goats Gruff. And what I've done is I'm going to put it on full screen. It, it sometimes takes a little moment. And what I've done is if you can see here, I've muted the volume. 
so we won't hear the the voiceover or the music and then you can just play that and so and they, the children will hear yours the story of the three billy goats gruff once upon a time there lived three billy goats gruff and they spent all day in the meadow eating sweet green grass so i hope you can see it's just it's a very simple way of sharing a story and animation but perhaps you want the children to hear your voice and they, you want um, them to um, hear your pronunciation you might want to pause the story and say oh what, what color is the me the medium size goat for example so if you've muted that you can use that um, you know YouTube is a wonderful resource but you can um, obviously not have the volume there so I'm going to just go back to the presentation now so that was a just a little bit about using books and stories. So the general success is what did the children find most engaging? Top of the list always, whether you're face to face, whether it's virtual songs, rhymes and dancing, um, really um, using voice, um, being engaging, exciting and movement is is, is just key with young learners, um, as, as you're probably aware. Um, Something that we also found to be really, really engaging was taking the familiar rituals and routines that children had, had experienced in the classroom and translating those into the virtual context. If you haven't had a, a group of children before, it's worth thinking about establishing some familiar rituals and routines in your, in your virtual um, sessions. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how the blended learning approach helped with children's engagement. Obviously using puppets and props, they're very passionate about using puppets. So I've got a little section to share with you um, near the end of the, the presentation. And the, one of the most engaging things to do is, is to do live practical activities with the children and their families at, um, alongside you. And where that's not possible, to record how to um, practical um, activities that children can go back to and watch again. And, and make things at home um, to support their learning. So songs, rhymes and dancing. Um, one of the, the things that I have and it, it is, is a song basket. So I've got that here. Here's my song basket. And in here, I've got lots of objects that relate to the song. So um, when I when I demonstrate things, I'm going to pretend that you are you are a group of children. So I hope you don't mind. Please don't feel patronised. Um, it's just to to show um, how I would how I would teach this, how I would do this in the virtual context. So, boys and girls, it's the magic song basket. Oh, are you ready? Shall we see? Oh, let's see what's inside. Oh. Oh. There. Meh, 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 meh. Boys and girls, do you know who it is? That's right, it's Bar Bar Black Sheep. Meh, meh. And Bar Bar Black Sheep would like us to sing his song. Shall we do it together? Are you ready? Let's get our hands and our voices ready. Bar Bar Black sheep have you any wool yes sir yes sir three bags full one for the master one for the dame and one for the little boy who lives down the lane oh very good boys and girls well done super singing shall we see what else there is this that's right it's twinkle star are you ready twinkle twinkle little star so i won't sing the whole song <laughs> i'm sure you get the idea and you probably know the song but just to to show you that using um a familiar object um a box a bag a basket for songs and having props where they're not actual objects having a picture of, of, a, of a star to hold up so the children are queued in and are ready to, to join in with you. You might have noticed when I sang Bar Bar Black Sheep, I, I was using actions. I was actually using British Sign Language, but just to say that when you are singing and performing for the children, 
actions are key. It doesn't have to be sign language. You can make up your own actions, but children will will hook the language into into those actions and and gestures, and it's just, it just in, increases the the level of engagement even more. One of the other things, as well as actions, gestures, is to have props to help you with your song. So we have a song called Five, Five Little Firefighters. And as you can see, <laughs> a very roughly drawn um, Five Little Firefighters um, just made out of, of a piece of white card um, being at home in the lockdown with no printer, had to get very creative. And so you can um, engage children by giving them a visual to go along with the song as well. So here they are. Five little firefighters standing in a row. One, two, three, four, five, they go. Hop on the engine with a shout. Quicker than a wink, the fire is out. Ooh. How many left, boys and girls? Can you see? One, two, three, four. Four little firefighters standing in a row. And so the song continues until you end up with no none left. They've all got on the engine and then you turn it around and off they go. So really simple props that just help um, to engage children, to, to grab their attention, bright colours and um, familiar, familiar things um, such as firefighters, ducks, stars, um, the things that, that they're familiar with. Um, so we've done songs using actions and objects and props and <laughs> one of the key things one of the things that was most engaging for the children for the families as well we were able to um, have video conferences where their cameras were on and we could see the families joining in too mummies and daddies and and grannies and grandpas um, um also um with the the action and the movement is um actually it makes you feel good too it actually cheered me right up getting up and dancing first thing in the morning and so i'm going to stop sharing my screen now i'm going to get up and dance for you please feel free to join in I, it will cheer you up and liven you up on a saturday afternoon so i'm just going to stop sharing my um presentation now i hope you can see me on the full screen so and what I did, because I wanted to move and have the children copy me and my actions, I would just use my phone with YouTube, um, get a song that I wanted that to queue up and I would play that. So I'm just going to turn the camera now. So I'm going to stand in the space over here and I'm hopefully you are going to hear the music. Ready everyone? Wake up, wake up, give yourself a shake up, get your body moving. Reach out, jump up, give your friend a thumbs up, it's another new day. Wake up, wake up, give yourself a shake up, get your body moving. Reach up, jump up, give your friend a thumbs up, it's another new day. Get your feet dancing to the beat. Get your body moving. Raise a shout. Hey, let your feelings out. It's another new day. So. I will not go on. <laughs> I'm sure you get the idea. Um, but th that's just the wake up shake up song easily available on YouTube. But you can obviously find whichever song you want to dance to and put some simple actions to it does uh, it does wake you up makes you feel good and um, the children really really enjoyed it and something i haven't mentioned yet about young children and dancing songs and rhymes repetition really is key um we as adults get bored by the same song the same story the same rhyme but the children don't <laughs> so when we would give them the choice, oh, which song shall we sing this morning, children? Wake up, shake up, would be every day until you could see the, the parents <laughs> by the end of the period thinking, not again, I'm going to have to dance again. But um, the children really, really enjoyed it and it really helps to get their energy levels up and to get them engaged and excited about what's coming next. So 
that's the wake up shake up now i'm going to share with you just um another action song actually before i put the presentation back on and it's more of a rhyme and um it's a silly one that the kids really um enjoy um and you have to follow along so i'm going to ask you to stand up again and join in with me because it's the only way you're going to remember it <laughs> if you actually do it so here i go again and this is called hi my name is joe now if you know cosmic yoga um, it's also available um, um, on Cosmic Yoga. You can see, you can use that as a demonstration, but if you want to do it yourself, it's Hi, my name is Joe. So we stand up and we say, Hi, my name is Joe, and I work in a button factory. One day, my boss said to me, He said, Joe, are you busy? I said, No, push the button with your right hand. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Hi, my name is Joe, and I work in a button factory. One day, my boss said to me, he said, Joe, are you busy? I said, no, push the button with your left hand. Ch -ch 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 Hi, my name is Joe, and I work in a button factory. One day, my boss said to me, he said, Joe, are you busy? I said, no. Push the button with your right foot, as you can see. So you both hands, both hands, your bottom, in the end, your head. So the children are moving wildly like this, and the song gets faster and faster and faster. And in the end, when you say, and my boss said to me, Joe, are you busy? You say, yes, and fall down on the floor in a heap because you're exhausted. <laughs> so, and that's a really a nice one that um, the children engage with as well. If you can see, if you're in a session, maybe energy levels are flagging, wandering, attention is wandering, to bring children back, to engage them again, always to include some getting up, moving around and joining in with, with songs and, and rhymes and actions. One of the um, the other things, I'm going to go back to the presentation now and share that again. Here we are. So songs, rhyme and dancing, movement is key. I think that, <laughs> I hope I've, I've demonstrated that. Um, and then the other thing about songs, rhymes and dancing is obviously to do them live, but if you want children to learn songs, to, to revisit language and actions and engagement, is to, we provided um, with um, song and movement recordings. I'm just going to show you some short clips. Um, this is, um, there's a spider on my toe. <laughs> Hazel, sorry to interrupt. We can't hear the audio on your video there. OK. I will try and share that again. When you share it, there's an... The bar, yes. Let's... Fingers crossed. <laughs> it's going to work now. I just... Are you ready? One, two, three. There's a spider on the floor, on the floor. There's a spider on the floor, on the floor. There's a spider on the floor. Tell me, are there any more? There's a spider on the floor, on the floor. Ooh, where are you going, sis? <gasps> ah, can you see? Where is he now? That's right. He's on my toe. <laughs> There's a spider on my toe, on my toe. There's a spider on my toe, on my toe. There's a spider on my toe. Oh, I think I'd better go. There's a spider. So I hope you can see it's just a, a short example of a song there that's about teaching parts of the body um, that, uh, you know, helping children to develop their language skills. But by making a recording, A, you can you can make sure that the everything's in the frame so the children can see everything. But also they can go back and revisit those songs if they want to sing it again. But maybe they can't remember the tune or um, maybe they're not um, families aren't English speakers. So the lyrics might not uh, giving them 
you know, a physical lyrics might not help. So we did that. And then the next one I'll just show you very briefly <laughs> is a movement recording. So um, the children um, at our school had had um, a visit from somebody who taught them a version of a hacker and it was very popular. So um, during the height of the lockdown, I thought it would be a good idea to record myself doing that and, and sharing it with the families. So it's just to show you the, the kinds of things that, that do engage children that, you know, it's <laughs> you lose all dignity. It goes out of the window. It's about making them laugh, about getting them to, to join in and have lots of fun. So I'm just going to share that with you quickly. We have to this is the hairy man who makes the sun shine. Upane, 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 kapane, the sun shines. <laughs> do you think you can remember that? Would you like to do it with the actions? We have to do it quite loud. Are you ready? Let's go. Kamate, kamate, kora, kora, kamate, kamate, kora, kora. This is the hairy man who makes the sun shine. Upane, 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 kapane, the sun. Shines. Ah. Did you do? So <laughs> we have to. There you go. <laughs> you can see that. Um, but putting those sorts of videos um, a, that parents and families and children can revisit, it just gives them something. They can learn the actions. They can learn the songs. And then when you, if you do it in to start a, a session or to help um, refocus things, that they'll know those those um, words and, and actions. Um, one of the other things I wanted to talk about, just, just briefly, it was the use of familiar rituals and routines. Um, so whether you're you're teaching um, virtually a group that you've already established a relationship with or that they're a new group, it, it's really good to have, um, you know, if, if you teach um, a session once a week on a Wednesday or you teach it every day, maybe we always start the session with, with this routine. And I'm just going to share with you some of the things that I did. So when, when we connect connected um, live with, with our children. We did it twice a day, a first thing in the morning and then um, a sort of before lunch session um, for, the, for the whole teaching group. And the things that we would do um, would be days of the week to teach that vocabulary and, and get it out there. And I'm just going to share with you now the song that I would use. So we'll say goodbye to the Billy Goat Scruff. So I'd use a, a Days of the Week song um, from from YouTube. We'll just wait for it to go full screen. And here you go. And the I think like now the children would all be able to see me in a small window while the while the full screen was was playing. And so we would um, do our days of the week every day. So listen. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the days of the week. Now, repeat after Monday. So that's um, just from the singing walrus um, and then it goes on where it's my turn, your turn. So then you go Monday and would ask the children to to respond, um, call and response um, song. So, you know, it, it, variety is good as well. So, you know, a lot of you singing songs, but also um, switching to, OK, now we're going to see this song on the screen or this story. Um, it does does help. Um, we are going to go back to the presentation now. Yes, I do want to share. Okay. 
here we go. Hopefully that's back and you can see it now. Um, so we had the um, the days of the week song, and then um, also I've, there's a picture here of, of the weather of the weather chart. So we would go through the weather um, with songs. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing again now, <laughs> and you're going to see me again. So we would sing a song of What's the weather like today? Ding a ling. Ding a ling, what's the weather like today? And then as an interactive part of the session would say, oh, have you looked out of your window? Let's have a look. What can you see out of your window? Hagobo, is it raining? Uh -huh. And then we would we would look through, is it, is it stormy? Is it sunny? Is it windy? And once we'd reached an agreement, we would sing, it's windy today, I like the wind, it's windy today, I like the wind, it's windy today, I like the wind, it's windy, it's windy today. And then one of the other things that I liked to, to share was in our classroom, um, we had a special helper every day. So you might have that um, when you're teaching somebody that has a responsibility. Maybe they go first in the line. Maybe they have to give out books or share resources. And so I found myself at home without my classroom resources. So my daughter decorated an egg box for me and this became our special helper box every day. So it would, we'd say, who's the special helper? Who's the special helper? Who's the special helper? Who's helping us today? And then we would have to open the special helper box. Now, are you ready, boys and girls? Let's open it. Oh, 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 it's a bit stuck. I think we need to blow. Are you ready, everyone? So after three, we're going to go one, two, three. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, nearly. I think you need to do it a bit harder. Are you ready? One, two, three. Whoa. Oh, boys and girls, did you see that? The name of the special helper flew out. Can you read it? Do you know who it is? It's Hakobo. And then we'd say, wow, Hakobo, you're the special helper today. That means that you've got to do extra good listening to your mummies and daddies at home. Maybe you're going to help set the table for lunch. And I know you're going to be really good at helping tidying up your toys. Fantastic special helper, Jacobo. And that's how we adapted one of our familiar routines, uh, daily routines to, to the virtual to the virtual context. So I am going to go back to the presentation now. And then just to really briefly talk to you about a blended learning approach. Obviously, when you're you're teaching the, the youngest learners, um, the amount of screen time that they have is it is an issue. Um, so what we what we endeavoured to do was um, provide some online, really engaging, exciting, lively activities, but also give some suggestions to to parents how they could support learning at home as well, and some really nice practical activities that they could do with their household objects. This is an example from a pre nursery class which was a they did a, a theme of sock puppets and so you can see there are lots of different activity suggestions and ideas there so it says how many socks can you count on the line remember to touch each sock as you count it can you show me 10 fingers um, they're pointing out apps and things that you can use how to make your own sock puppet um, it's just you know one example, but what we what we endeavoured to do was have um, uh, offline activities um, to support and the online activities supporting supporting the learning going hand in hand um, to help and support our learners and our families. And um, as part of that, um, directing families of, of things that they could do at home was often signposting them and demonstrating the use of, on, um, dem of online resources. Um, one of my colleagues, Kelly, um, recorded uh, uh, um, using um, a screen recording with PowerPoint um, using uh, a software application and showing the children and families how they could use this resource to, to do an activity at home. And I'm just going to share that with you now. You can go into Minimash, get your grown up to help you. And if you click on the wall chart, which is Simple City here. There, look, can you see the builders? 
with their bricks and their truck and their cement mixer and their wheelbarrow. Can you see? Here they are. Inside here, we've got a little game where we can build a house. Let's click the simple one. There we go. Here at the bottom, we've got lots of things for you to use to build your house. We've got some brick walls. We've got a stone wall as well that I'm going to use as my... You can go into... So I hope you can see there. Pardon me, I'm going to go back. I hope you can see there that that's just um, is somebody recording themselves using um, using a, um, a, you know um, a piece of software so that children and families can watch that how-to video and then do that activity themselves when they when it's the appropriate time for them. Um, there are loads of free online resources out there. Um, ICT games, top marks. I recommend. There's a really nice. Um, if I have time at the end, I'll share it with you. But I I, I feel like. Um, I might be pushing on um, a little bit now, but there, there's a really nice, there are really nice, simple um, pattern making, shape recognition activities. There's Class Dojo, which is aimed at um, older children. It's like a reward system, but there are some features such as a timer that are really useful there. And then obviously YouTube, there are um, really great songs and stories. Um, I've just listed three super simple songs. Kids TV, one, two, three, and The Singing Walrus are um, to name but a few of really appropriate um, uh, you know um resources that are out there for young children so I've, i'm coming to resources props and puppets the the key thing um to support teaching and learning particularly um through a screen and um, puppets are a key versatile resource when you're working face to face or or online with young learners um so here is my puppet here's I hope you can see this is Edmund the elephant and Edmund he's he's great he's he's used to teach um a wealth of things um I'm just going to stop sharing now just to demonstrate something very quickly with him so this is Edmund you can say hello oh you can see yeah I can see them too they are doing very good listening and joining in I know oh, what's that Edmund Edmund has been practicing his maths and his counting and he's really pleased because he's going to show us. He's put some numbers on the washing line. Would you like to see what he's been doing? Let's have a look. Let's see. Can you see the numbers over here, everybody? Let's get a little bit closer. Here we are. Can you see? He's been organising the numbers. I'm going to move out of the way. Shall we have Edmund? Can you see? Let's count. One, two, five. Five? Is that right, boys and girls? No, Edmund. Number five doesn't go there. Oh dear. Don't be sad. It's okay. We all make mistakes. Can you tell Edmund which number should go next? And you can see that we would then sit at the number line, we put the numbers in the right order. Um, Edmund, the puppet, will make the mistakes, so we're not correcting children or making them feel um making them feel bad but you know, we're teaching Edmund because we're big boys and girls and we know how to count. You can use puppets to address um, emotional issues as well so for example um, Edmund has a good friend called Dilly and unfortunately during the lockdown Dilly got really cross and he told his mommy to go away in a really loud voice and so we had to talk up to Dilly what what could Dilly do to feel better and how how could we speak to mommy and daddy and, and how we can talk about how we're feeling so you can use the the puppet as a as a, me a medium to to you know talk about emotional issues that, that are are taking place but also Puppets and props are just really key um, in storytelling and um, language development. And the one thing that I really wanted to share with you today is, is making your own puppets with very limited resources. So here I have <laughs> my box. Um, so you can see this is uh, my daughter actually made this, a Frankenstein made with a, a toilet roll, <laughs> those, those scarce resources, um, and a few googly eyes and, and a pen. So you could just have this. And, and there's a puppet but um, one of the really nice things to do is shadow puppets and they're really easy to make really simple um, this is a look um, a carton a cardboard yogurt packaging and all you would do just draw your shape onto the cardboard with your scissors cut it out and then with a cocktail stick and some sticky tape you just fix that to the back 
and you've got a shadow puppet. Now, I'm just going to very quickly show you. I'm not going to be able to tell you the whole story, I'm afraid, because we're running out of time. But um, all you need is, hopefully you can see this, I've got a spotlight here, and I'm going to just now, I'm going to close the blind. So I shall move away for a second. I'm going to put my spotlight on. I'm going to move my number line so you can see. And turn the camera around. So we're going to move the camera. Now for this, I have to be honest with you, you do have to rehearse. So you do need to know where you need to position your camera i have actually got mine on a chair and i've put masking tape on the floor so i know where it needs to be so that you'll see the the puppets and i'm going to go away and tell you the story now so please do shout ali and Gemma if you can't see anything <laughs> the night max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind or another his mother called him Wild Thing and sent him off to bed without eating anything. That very night in Max's room a forest grew. The walls became the world all around and his ceiling hung with vines. And a private boat came by and Max sailed off through night and day and in and out of weeks until he came to the land where the wild things are. So I hope you can see <laughs> from that that it's very easy to make the puppets. It just takes a little bit of time. Um, you can do very simple ones. It's just a different um, dimension it adds a different um, level of, of storytelling to engage the pupils. I shall turn off the uh, spotlight now and take you back to the presentation. Um, then the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was um, practical activities. I mean, these were, they're, they're super fun. They probably had the, the best levels of engagement, um, asking, you know, asking children to come and do live make alongs. Maybe it was making their own puppet. Maybe they were, we were making and um, doing an experiment. But what I found um, <laughs> for practical activities, the key is to be prepared. So one of the most important things is to give timely notice to the pupils and their and their grown ups. So this is just an example. We use Teams. You might use you might use email. You might use any other platform. Um, but I would send. Um, we're going to be making this. Act, we're going to be doing this activity on this date. And if you would like to join in, it was always an option. They, you, nobody would, you had to. You could just watch the session. Um, I would write what they would need to bring along, but then also make sure that I took photographs of the equipment as well and um, tools. I mean, it, 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 in your working in a bilingual context, you, you would write the post in both languages because they're for the they're for the adults as well. But having visuals there really helps people. Okay, okay, I need I know what I need to go and collect to make the Play-Doh. Um, so you can see the photos, the flour, the salt, the oil, and um, and the, the uh, utensils needed as well there. And here are just, these are just a few examples of some of the photos of, of equipment. We were doing um, a colour mixing experiment here. You can see they needed water, um, containers, uh, food colouring, and an ice tray. Um, we were making our own um, projectors at the top there with the need, and so you can see everything they need. And then the last one down the bottom there was a very fun game where um, they needed to bring those things along for the for the live session to interact with. So it's just important that you have visuals as well as as um, and giving timely notice to people so they can gather those resources together. Um, so. Being prepared is key. Um, I, I would say ensure you have your session step by step. I would use a whiteboard or these post-it notes. Um, I hope you can see that where I just write down exactly what I was going to do in each session, because once you get going in a live session, sometimes you can something can happen. <laughs> something tips over, something doesn't quite work and you can lose your way. So if you've got 
you've got things planned there and always a couple of backup things in case something goes badly, doesn't work, um, doesn't take as much time as you anticipated. Um, so you've got an alternative, a plan B. Um, have everything you may possibly need to hand um, and don't forget you'll need to clean up if you're doing some practical activities. Um, I'll give you a, an example. I was demonstrating how we could do mark making and letter formation using a tray and shaving foam and I got my the foam and the tray and I was going this is how we do it boys and girls and then I put the tray down and realized I had nothing to clean my hands on and so then when you're working with electronics a computer an iPad whatever you do need to remember that you need to have some baby wipes to hand or, or a towel or something when you're doing um, practical um, activities so um, I'm not going to be able to go into making Play-Doh, I don't think. I'm going to just show you the very beginning of this clip. Um, so I would make Play-Doh in a live session. This is a video to show um, families how they could make it at home if they if they chose to. Um, in fact, what I'm going to I'm not going to make it, but I'm going to show you how I've set up for it here. So I have everything to hand. I'm not going to do it because we have come um, run out of time. But here I've got set up here i hope you can see i have off camera to the to the families but i've got a table here with everything ready to go and i would then get the ingredients out just to remind them oh we need our flour we need our salt we need our oil and i would then start to make it on the table i'd also make um, a recipe available um to the families and then the key thing which i've got down here and i have to show you is <laughs> i have got a bowl of soapy water and a towel because when you make play-doh you're going to um, get it all over your hands and you're going to need to to clean up afterwards so that is what you you need those things to to prepare i'm going to go back to the presentation now and just show you a very brief hello everyone Water of a cup, just a little bit, and pour that in there. I'm going to close the oil now and put that away over there. Oops, a daisy. Colouring got stuck then. So I'm going to stir the oil into the flour and the salt. This is looking quite dry, so we do need to put the rest of the water in to be too sticky either. Now, it smells there you go. different. So you can you see how the video takes uh, takes you through how to make the play-doh and and reinforcing vocabulary and those keywords um that's the um color mixing ice experiment and the this the bowls and the straw you put chickpeas in one bowl and then you set a timer and they have to use the straw to suck the chickpea from one bowl to the other as quickly as they can <laughs> um very quickly a few key points um is a balance between online and offline activities. Preparation is key. Um, involving your parents and family, they need to be on board. They, they, we're talking about very young learners. They need to want be there supporting, um, signposting free resources and modelling their use for them and having a backup plan. And then the most important thing is have fun. Enjoy yourself. If you're having a good time, I can assure you, your children and your families will too. Um, I hope um, we've got a little bit of time for questions now. So thank you very much. Hi Hazel, this is Gemma from the studio. We have a couple of questions for you. Um, firstly, uh, now you are physically back in the classroom. Uh, have you continued to use any of the ideas that you used online? For example, the shadow puppets or the presentations with the stories? Um, at the moment, I haven't yet because we're very, very early in a, in a term of, of nursery and <laughs> so we're settling children in. But um, the, the idea of sharing some of the, um, the songs and, and the practical activities with um, with families so uh, rather than maybe using some of those videos and things in the classroom um, actually having the, the bank of ideas to send home to families to say well you know we've we've asked you to have a go at making play-doh because we can't make and use play-doh at the moment so at home have a go and here's the video to show you how to do that and some of the things you can do with it so. 
Great. And another question from Imma is, uh, what application did you use to record over the PowerPoint? Um, it, we actually did it within PowerPoint. Um, there was a voice recording option um, within, within the PowerPoint. Great. And one final question from Anonymous. How long can you keep the little ones engaged in an online session? So three, four or five years old. OK, um, well, speaking from my personal experience with three and four year old, it did very much depend on, on the session. So the more the more interactive, the better. Um, we started off very, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, um, but sometimes we, we would be, depending on what we were doing, um, it, it could go on for, for 30 minutes. 30 minutes, I'd say, would be an absolute maximum. Um, and that would be when we did things like um, ask them to send photos in of them as a baby and them now. And we did a guess, guess the baby um, PowerPoint or if we were doing a very practical session like making uh, projectors, making Play-Doh, that sort of thing. That's great. Thank you, Hazel. Thank you very much. OK, thank you so much, Hazel, for your presentation. I know there are a lot of people that have been watching it, I found it really, really useful. Um, and we're coming now to the end. Hold on, let me just so you can see me that I'm speaking to you. Um, we're coming now to the end of the conference. And um, just a couple of things to remind you of. And um, the virtual hall, you will have seen the link to the virtual hall in the question and answer section throughout the conference. It, there is also a link to it on the web page that has the information about the conference. Um, in the virtual hall, we've got lots of information from different publishers, um, sort of showing you material that they knew how they have. Um, we also have, um, you know, our exams department giving information about various different exams. Um, we also have a look into the new British Council Digital Library, which is quite exciting and has lots and lots of resources. And we it will stay open, so we're still trying to collect 80 tips, 80 teaching tips to celebrate our 80 years um, of the British Council in Spain. Um, Let's see, we will also, as of Monday, all of the talks that have been on today, there will be an option to um, access material, maybe the PowerPoints or a handout that the speakers have made available, and you'll be able to access those in the virtual hall. Uh, lastly, just a couple more things, is that we are starting a series of um, like bilingual conference panels um, where a panel come together and discuss a, a specific issue and an area in teaching and our first one is going to be on the 20th of October um, I will be sending you information with that and I'll be asking you for some feedback which we'd really appreciate that you took the time to um, to fill out for us and the last thing very quickly so everyone I'm sure wants to carry on with their Saturday I'm sure We've got a little bit of day left over and um, just to say thank you. Thank you to all the speakers. All the presentations, you know, were brilliant and um, to say thank you for the, you know, the attendees for coming along and and also everyone that's been behind putting this conference together and I hope it's been enjoyable and, you know, let's see what we can do next year and hopefully, you know, we'll see what happens. Thank you very much.